Yo, what is good, Jets Nation? Welcome back to Jets Media. This is Richie, and in this video, I want to talk about some rumors that's circulating. According to Ralph Vecchiano's SNY, the Jets might be looking to trade the 10th overall pick. As we know, the Jets have the 4th and the 10th pick in this year's draft in the first round. We also hear from Connor Hughes of The Athletic. He's all over on Twitter. He's talking with Jets people all over the place on social media, saying that the Jets might not use both of their first round picks in terms of drafting a rookie, and the Jets might be looking to trade one of these picks whether that's trading back in the draft, whether it's trading up, or most intriguingly enough, trading for an established veteran in this league to bring in here that can provide an immediate impact for the New York Jets. So in this video, I want to go over all the speculation, what the Jets could do if they are trying to move this 10th overall pick, whether that is going to trade for a player, which players are going to be, are there any players available on the trade block? Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens this offseason. I'm so excited. Guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll be posting so much Jets content all the way throughout the offseason, free agency, the draft content, so much stuff. I'm just getting started on Jets Media throughout the offseason. I took a couple of days off. Off, but now it's going to be locked and loaded. There's going to be streams, videos pretty much almost every day. I'm going to be coming out with a mock offseason where I break down who I want the Jets to draft throughout the all seven rounds, who I want the Jets to go out there and sign a free agency, who I want to cut, and just give you guys my overall thoughts about what the Jets should do when it comes to this offseason because we got so much ammunition to really make a big time change going into year number two under Robert Sala and Mike LaFleur. And it's just going to be a really fun offseason to cover this New York Jets team. So guys, again, guys, please make sure you smash that subscribe button. I'm so close to 10,000 subscribers. So if you guys want to help me out and get to 10K, it would mean a lot to me. And also, don't forget to like the video if you guys enjoyed. And before we hop into today's video, we're going to hear a quick word from the sponsor of Jets Media, DraftKings Sportsbook. The NFL playoffs are finally here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is kicking things off with a huge offer you do not want to miss. As we're counting down the Super Bowl 56, new customers that sign up to DraftKings Sportsbook can get 56 to 1 odds on any team to win their game. You bet just $5, you're going to win up to $280 of free bet money if your team is indeed victorious. That's right. If you bet $5, you can win up to $280 of free bets if your team is indeed victorious. If Sportsbook is still not available in your area just yet, you do not have to worry because everyone can play for huge cash prizes on the DraftKings Daily Fantasy Football Contest. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot of millions of dollars in cash prizes with your first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and make sure you use my code JETSMEDIA in the link down below in the description. They're going to give you 56 to 1 odds in any game of your choosing. You just bet $5 and you're going to win $280 of free bets if your team is indeed victorious. Once again, that's my promo code JETS Media, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. So let's get right into what the Jets could be doing if they are interested in moving that 10th overall pick. I feel like Joe Douglas and his staff has to keep an open mind, and I feel that that's, that's exactly what they're going to be doing heading into the draft process. As we know, the Jets coaching staff will be at the Senior Bowl, which is going to be so beneficial for the Jets to make sure they have an up-close personal perspective of all the top prospects in the NFL draft. But I feel like the Jets need to make sure that they have an open mind to any situation. I feel like Joe Douglas and his staff has been doing that ever since they came in the building. Um, if you want to just break it down, in simplistic forms. There's only a couple options they can do with this 10th overall pick. Number one, they can either draft a player, right? They, if the best player available, um, they see someone on the clock, they're on the clock and they see someone that's available and they love them, whether it, it doesn't matter what the player is, we'll get into that in future videos, but you can obviously draft the player at number 10, or you can use that 10th overall pick to package it up to move up in the draft. And maybe the Jets love a player in the top 10 or the top nine rather. And they use that pick and, and obviously a pick later on in the draft to move up to get someone they really love because they don't believe that he'll be available at number 10. Or number three, the, then the third option is uh, using that pick to trade back and acquire more draft capital. Say they're at 10 and they feel like there's a lot of players on the board that they really love. And say they hypothetically trade back to say 17 and they see seven guys on the board that they say, if we trade back to 17, we're comfortable with any of these seven players and they're gonna get more capital and use that to really backlog the draft. That's another option. But the fourth option, which is the most intriguing one, which I'm gonna focus on the most in this video is packaging that 10th overall pick for a proven player around the league and trading it for 
an established veteran that's been a guy in this league that's been impactful. Um, so the first guy that comes in that's been circling around the Jets for a while, and I made a video on him, is wide receiver Calvin Ridley, right? So Calvin Ridley's and the Atlanta Falcons is coming off a season where he started off a couple of games and then he just did not play for the rest of the season because he has mental problems uh, in terms of, we. I don't really know the specificities of uh, Calvin Ridley's stuff, so I'm not going to, you know, talk about it. Uh, hopefully the Jets understand that if they are going to trade for him and he needs to make sure he's A-OK -okay mentally before he gets on the field, hopefully he's OK, obviously. But my biggest concern with trading for a guy like Calvin Ridley is me personally, I don't really want to give up the 10th overall pick for him. If we're going to go out there and trade for Calvin Ridley, I'd rather package a second round pick and say, a, you know, a second and a fourth or a second and a fifth or maybe even a second and a third if that has to get uh, get the job done. I feel like the Jets don't need to give up the 10th overall pick for a guy in Calvin Ridley, um, but I'm very high on Calvin Ridley. I feel like he would be provided such a big impact to this team immediately. Wide receiver number one next to Corey Davis and Elijah Moore. Obviously, we're hopeful that we'll re-sign Braxton Berrios, but we'll see if that actually happens. And that's a really mean wide receiver corps entering year number two for Zach Wilson. I feel like uh, Joe Douglas needs to make sure if there's any guy, anybody available on the trade market, especially the wide receiver room, they need to uh, provide a big-time upgrade. I feel like Calvin really is the guy. So, obviously, in this video, we're focusing on that 10th overall pick. So, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you think Calvin Ridley is, uh, is worth trading that 10th overall pick for straight up? I personally don't think so. If the Jets are going to use that 10th overall pick on a wide receiver i'd rather draft one uh i know there's a lot of wide receivers available in this draft at number 10 uh, maybe we can even trade back in the draft and then you use that pick on a wide receiver i just don't really think that that 10th overall pick is worth a guy in calvary especially someone that's had a lot of off the field issues uh, mentally um so yeah that's my thoughts obviously there's gonna be a lot of other players that's gonna become available but calvin really is the main guy that a lot of people around the nfl are anticipating to be traded from the atlanta falcons so there might be some players that we don't even know about that are gonna be like hey i want out and Joe Douglas is going to be talking to them and say, hey, we'll bring you in potentially. Because if you guys remember in Joe Douglas's uh, press conference at the end of the season, he said that we're going to be aggressive. Any player that becomes available, we feel like we have enough ammunition, enough draft capital to be aggressive. We're going to be in on every single conversation if any opportunity presents himself. So that's really good news because we saw Joe Douglas do great things in terms of the trade market so far as a Jets GM in terms of trading our own players for draft capital. The one thing we have not seen from Joe Douglas yet is trading for a proven and player with their own draft picks because that's something that the Jets need to do. If we want to be competitive next year, I'd be all on board by packaging this draft capital for an established veteran such as Calvin Ridley or if any other player becomes available. So guys, leave a comment down below about your thoughts about this video, what the Jets could be doing with this 10th overall pick. There's a lot of speculation. There's going to be a lot of stuff uh, leading up to the draft and I'm really excited to break it down. And guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Let's go Jets. Peace.